but we're gonna make it work. Oh, it died on me. Let's try that again. Be quicker, Kim. You gotta be quicker. All right, all right, all right. And she did it. Yay! We're gonna put her back here. You guys can't even see her. Let me see. All right, right there. Well, hello there, friends. Welcome back, or welcome if you are new. If you are new here, hello, my name is Kim. I am an author, illustrator, and here on my channel, I love to talk all things about books, writing, and I like to share tidbits of my everyday life. Now, I am very excited about this video because, not only is it because I'm going to be sharing 10 LGBTQIA books that center queer authors, queer, main characters oh, i'm just so excited for this list that i have to share with you guys but also i'm very excited because i haven't done one of these sit down chatty videos in a while also if you guys see um some sort of it's not smoke okay it's like it's my humidifier it's like right here next to my desk because your girl has allergies and she needs a humidifier right next to her at all times so I'm excited because A, the books I'm going to be sharing center LGBTQIA main characters as well as authors, and also because I haven't done one of these just chatty sit down book recommendation videos in a while. And we have officially entered June, it is Pride Month, okay, and I am just so ecstatic to be sharing amazing books. Okay, this is just 10 of them, but there are so many out there. Now these are 10 books that I have not yet read that I am very excited to get into this month and any other month. It doesn't just have to be during Pride Month, okay? We should center uh, queer authors, queer main characters uh, throughout the year. It should be added into our TBR all the time. So if you guys know me, you know what kind of books I like to read. I am a huge fan of reading fantasy, cozy fantasy, some romanticy as well, graphic novels. So this little curated 10 book list has all of those elements in there. So let's see, I believe I have two poetry books that I'm going to be sharing that I'm really excited to read for June, as well as some fantasy, so really cool magical systems, some horror, some dark academia, vampires, ghosts, uh, wizards, witches, and a good old summer romance fling, as well as one graphic novel that I have on this list. So. I'm excited to get into this. Also, if you hear that noise in the background, I don't know if my camera will pick it up, but my AC just went on and today it is extremely hot. So unless you guys want me to fry up, I need to keep that on. <laughs> All right, you guys, I got my list that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. I have here some honey ginger tea in my good old spooky mug because we're spooky year round, right? And I need to make more use of this mug other than just during the fall season. So that is why it's here with me today. <laughs> We got our candle burning in the background. I have a cozy setting on my laptop. So how about we just jump into it and start talking about some amazing LGBTQIA books to read for June for Pride Month. So let's get into it. Ah, that's still hot. Okay, I'm gonna set that down. All right, so I'm gonna start off with the two poetry books that I have here on my list. Now, if you've been here for a while, you know that I love a good poetry book. I absolutely adore poetry. Poetry was my first sort of gateway into getting back into reading. So poetry is always gonna hold a special near and dear place in my heart. And I find that during times when I'm feeling a little bit uninspired, unmotivated with my writing or just reading in general, poetry books tend to be that very good palate cleanser in our reading that I just, I just go to it. And lately I have been in a reading slump. So I'm very excited for these two poetry books because I feel like they're going to really just help me get back into reading. So the two portrait books that I'm going to be sharing with you guys are by queer authors and the first one is Lord of the Butterflies by Andrea Gibson and the little synopsis on here says in Andrea Gibson's latest collection they continue their artful and nuanced looks at gender, romance, loss, and family. Each emotion here is deft and delicate resting inside of imagery heavy enough to sink the heart while giving the body wings to soar. If that's not the most beautiful book description, 
I don't know what is because that sounds absolutely breathtaking. I'm so excited to jump into this one. I think this one is also only 96 pages. So that's the good thing about poetry books that they tend to be short, quick, well, depending what your reading pace is, but 96 pages is not intimidating, at least for me. It's very doable. I can probably read this in one day, one sitting. So poetry books, you guys, don't sleep on them. The last poetry book that I have here on my list is Time is a Mother by Ocean Vyong. And who was it? Oh, my sister read this book and she highly recommended this book. And I've come across Ocean Vyong's works before and their writing style is absolutely breathtaking. It is very lyrical. There's nothing more I love about poetry than how just lyrical and almost like a song it sounds. It's just... It's beautiful. I mean, come on, my, my YouTube channel is called A Life of Poetry. You guys should know, I love poetry. I love poetry so much. So the book synopsis says, in this deeply intimate second poetry collection, Ocean Vuong searches for life among the aftershocks of his mother's death, embodying the paradox of sitting within grief while being determined to survive beyond it. Shifting through memory and in concert with the themes of his novel, On Earth Were Briefly Gorgeous, which is another one of his works that I really, really want to also pick up and read, Vion contends with personal loss, the meaning of family, and the cost of being the product of an American war in America. At once vivid, brave, and propulsive, Vion's poems circle fragmented lives to find both restoration as well as the epicenter of the break. These poems represent a more innovative and daring experimentation with language and form illuminating how the themes we perennially live in and question are truly inexhaustible bold and present and a testament to tenderness in the face of violence time is a mother is a return and a forging forth all at once i swear these poetry book descriptions are just absolutely breathtaking and i think because they're poetry books so the book description just has to make it justice are just even more just I don't know just eloquently put together so lyrical so beautiful it just drags you in so very excited for both of these poetry book collections I think these are going to be great books to read for me to get out of this little reading slump that I'm in <laughs> all right friends now moving on to fantasy so the first one on my list actually just recently came out that I'm just I am over the moon for this book. I still have not gone to go pick it up, but it is definitely a book that I'm going to physically own. Also, by the way, I have been very picky lately with the books that I'm physically buying and then books that I just want to read but are not necessarily inclined to own. I've just been either listening to the audiobook or picking it up from my local library or reading it on my Kindle. But this book, you guys, this book is definitely a book that I'm going to go out and buy because I need to own this book. And that book is titled Shane Lende by Darcy Little Badger. Now, before I tell you guys what that book is about, let me first show you the first book in that series, El Atsoe by Darcy Little Badger. This beautiful book, I love this book so much, okay? This book was one of the first books that I read that really got me into reading fantasy. I am just such a huge fan of this story. I read this book maybe like three, three years ago, three, four years ago. And the prequel to this just came out like a month ago, a couple weeks ago. And I'm very excited to continue reading the story of El Atsoe. So just a quick little brief description. Our main character is uh, queer and our main character is also indigenous Lipan Apache and it does take place in America but it is not the America that you would think it is. This America is shaped by the stories, the folklore stories that indigenous people and also not indigenous people tell. These stories are actually real. These monsters or spirits or ghosts are real and they roam this America just freely. That's how it is. In this particular story, we are following Elatsoe who can see ghosts. And there's this cute relationship with her dog. 
and who passed away and she could see his ghost and it's just so adorable so anyways in this town where she lives there is some weird things happening and of course Elatsua and her friend are determined to figure out what that thing is what is happening and bring justice to their town which is also I believe getting like gentrified and whatnot but it is a beautiful fantasy story with beautiful magical elements I absolutely love it with that being said Shane Lende just came out and I am so excited to continue reading Elatsoe's story. So it says, This prequel to Elatsoe, centered on Ellie's grandmother, deepens and expands Darcy's one-of-a-kind world and introduces us to another cast of characters that will wend their way around readers' hearts. Shane works with her mother and their ghost dogs, tracking down missing persons even when their families can't afford to pay. Their own family was displaced from their traditional home years ago following a devastating flood and the loss of Shane's father and her grandparents. They don't think they'll ever get their home back. Then Shane's mother and a local boy go missing after a strange interaction with a fairy ring. Shane, her brother, her friends, and her lone surviving grandparent who isn't to be trusted set off on the road to find them, but they may not be anywhere in this world or this place in time. Nevertheless, Shane is going to find them. See, that's what I love because in Elatsaway as well, there was like some sort of multi-dimensional thing where you can go into another dimension, the dimension of the dead. So I'm curious if that's also going to be implemented because it says, but they may not be anywhere in this world or this place in time. So Darcy Little Badger does a great job at implementing just these magical elements. It is very atmospheric. The storyline is just so captivating and I'm just so excited to get into Shane Lende. Now the next book that I have here, friends, I actually picked up maybe like two months ago. I picked it up when it sort of came out and I'm very excited for this book, mostly because I have a deep fascination with vampire stories, okay? And I realized that I don't read enough vampires. I more so watch a lot of vampire shows. So this year I really want to make an effort to read more vampire stories. So I'm starting strong with this sapphic romance vampire story and that is An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. First of all, look at this cover friends. This cover is absolutely breathtaking. I would definitely have this as a poster because it just goes with my vibe. And then on the back, friends, it says, one of us was always going to bleed for the other. Okay, sold. I sold. I already know I'm gonna love this book. The little blurb on here says, Sumptuous and mesmerizing, an education in malice is a delicious, dark academia, tale of blood, secrets, and insatiable, 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 <laughs> and insatiable, hungers from st gibson's author of the cult hit a dowry of blood that's right this author also wrote a dowry of blood which is another vampire story haven't read it heard amazing things about it why haven't i read it can't even tell you i'm sorry i've i've been failing in my vampire reading book department i'm sorry i will do better friends so the synopsis says deep in the forgotten hills of massachusetts stands saint perpetua's women's college isolated and ancient it is not a place for timid girls here secrets are currency ambition is lifeblood and strange ceremonies welcome students into the fold what is the fold? On her first day of class, Laura Sheridan is thrust into an intense academic rivalry with the beautiful and enigmatic Carmilla. I love that our potential love interest is named Carmilla because have you guys read the book Carmilla? The first vampire ever before Dracula? If not, you need to read that, please. That was the first sapphic vampire story that ever was that actually inspired Bram Stoker's Dracula. Together they are drawn into the confidence of their demanding poetry professor De La Fontaine who holds her own dark obsession with Carmilla. Okay, so Carmilla's like the hot girl in town. We love it. Okay, but as their rivalry blossoms into something far more delicious, Laura must confront her own strange hungers. Tangled in a sinister game of politics, bloodthirsty professors, and magic, Laura and Carmilla must decide how much they are willing to sacrifice in their ruthless pursuit of knowledge. 
Okay, so this sounds like it's gonna have a cute little love triangle with lots of blood involved. So maybe if you are icky to blood, don't read vampire stories, but maybe you're missing out. So I don't know what to tell you, friends. <laughs> Now moving on friends, the next book is another Dark Academia. This is another book that I might physically go buy because I'm a cover buyer and I love pretty book covers and I wanna own all the pretty book cover books. So the book synopsis. A dark and funny YA thriller with a supernatural twist. 10 years ago, four students lost their lives in the infamous North Tower murders at the elite Carvel College of Art, forcing Carvel to close its doors. Now Carvel is reopening and fearless student Lottie is determined to find out what really happened. But when her roommate Alice stumbles upon a sinister soul splitting ritual hidden in Carvel's haunted library, the North Tower claims another victim. Can Lottie uncover the truth before the North Tower strikes again? Can Alice reverse the ritual before her monstrous alter ego consumes her? And can they stop flirting for literally 15 seconds in order to do this? <laughs> Exploring possession and ambition, lust and blood loss, femininity and violence, the Society of Soulless Girls is perfect for fans of Ace of Spades, The Secret History, and The Inheritance Games, which I haven't read any of them, but this still sounds good. <laughs> there is nothing like a good dark academia book to get you through the summer blues because Heat and me just, we don't get along, okay? We're not friends. And we're, we're coming into summer already and I'm already dreading it. So that means I need to stock up on my dark academia books immediately. <laughs> All right, friends, moving on. This book is a book that I actually do own and I have not read it. Can't tell you why I haven't read it, but I just haven't read it. But it sounds so good, friends. And that is The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas. Look at this creepy, eerie cover. Love it. Also, before I read the synopsis of this book, there is a trigger warning for folks who are watching. There is a uh, shooting that happens here, so if you want to just skip this description, then feel free to just forward on. So the synopsis says, living in two worlds is exhausting and no one knows this better than 16 year old Jake Livingston. His working class, diverse neighborhood is a far cry from the world of St. Clair Prep, where he is one of the only black students constantly at the mercy of racist teachers and peers who don't understand him. But when his neighbor, a survivor of a grisly school shooting, is murdered and the bloody initials of the now dead school shooter Sawyer Dune are left on the wall of Jake's home, Jake is forced to confront another world he wishes he could escape the world of the dead. As a medium, Jake knows ghosts are usually harmless, rarely interacting with people, but Sawyer isn't harmless. In life, he was a troubled teen who shot and killed six kids at a local high school before taking his own life. Now he's a powerful, vengeful ghost and he has plans for his afterlife, plans that include Jake. When Sawyer begins stalking him, high school becomes a different kind of survival game one Jake is not sure he can win. Gripping, timely, and utterly unapologetic, the taking of Jake Livingston is chilling horror that haunts with searing social commentary from an exciting new talent. So this one's a heavy one, friends, so I would say tread carefully if you do end up picking this one up. Now this next one I am quite excited about because I absolutely love period book, and this one, you know, has to do around that time frame, and it has magical elements which is always a plus for me and that is the ruthless lady's guide to wizardry by cm wagoner this looks super interesting and i believe this is book number two maybe in a series but i believe that you can read this as a standalone at least that is how the book description read when i first read it so i'm gonna go ahead and read this and not pay attention that this is book number two in a sort of series and the synopsis says, Delaria Wells, a petty con artist, occasional thief, and partly educated fire witch, is behind on her rent in the city of Lace Court. Again, then she sees the wanted sign seeking female persons of martial or magical ability to guard a lady of some importance prior to the celebration of her marriage. Delhi fast talks her way into the job and joins a team of highly peculiar women tasks with protecting their wealthy charge from unknown assassins. Delhi quickly sets the sights on one of her companions, the confident and well-bred Wynne Sinalem. The job looks like nothing but romance and easy money until things take a deadly 
and undead turn. With the help of a bird-loving necromancer, a shape-shifting schoolgirl, and an ill-tempered reanimated mouse named Buttons, Deli and Wynn are determined to get the best of an adversary who wields a twisted magic and has friends in the highest of places. There's nothing more that I love than just wizards, witches, cute pet names, buttons, okay that's cute, and a sapphic romance. I love it. This seems funny and witty and I feel like I'm gonna have a good time with this one. <laughs> so speaking about witches, I have another witchy book for you guys and that is Practical Rules for Cursed Witches by Kayla Cottingham. This looks like something that is just so up my alley. I love witchy books, love witchy books. And the synopsis here says, from the New York Times bestselling author of My Dearest Darkest comes a sapphic fantasy adventure about a teen witch who must complete her magical training by breaking a powerful family curse but her own affliction to never find true love gets in the way when she falls for the girl she's trying to save magic is in delilah's bee's blood her absentee father is the world's most famous curse breaker while all the women in her family are fated to never find true love so when delilah graduates her magical training and must complete her calling she has the perfect task in mind to break the bee family curse but delilah's calling is hijacked by kieran palumbra a member of the wealthiest and most powerful family in the country and breaking his curse suddenly becomes her official assignment every generation a pair of palumbra twins are doomed with one twin draining the other of their life and magic each day kieran grows weaker while briar gets closer to something monstrous as delilah and the twins set out on their quest they quickly realize that breaking the palumbra curse isn't going to be simple for one the palumbra family doesn't actually want their curse broken and they've sent hunters after them to ensure they fail secondly it's briar there's something about her that gets under delilah's skin and makes her want to kiss the perpetually grumpy look off her face but with time running out for the twins and delilah's own curse getting in the way they may not stand a chance of finding their happily ever after i feel like this is going to be a good book to read as an audiobook i feel like this would just do great as just having in the background listening listening to it as I am doing some other stuff. So I might opt for this one to be in audiobook format for me. All right, friends, so now moving on. The next book that I have on here is titled That Summer Feeling by Bridget Morrissey. Now, let me quickly say that this book is not a book that I would typically go for, but you know, there's times when I'm craving like a cheesy rom-com romance type of book, and I feel like this is what that's going to be. You know, kind of like Hallmark, right? There's times when I'm just like oh, I just want to watch something cheesy and corny and I automatically just see what the heck Hall Hallmark has on because I just want to <laughs> I just want to I want something just easily just to just consumable nothing that I need to fully focus my attention on something that I could just have playing in the background and so I feel like this book is going to be great when I find myself in a headspace like that when I just want something just cheesy and easy nothing that I fully need to focus on so I feel like this is going to be that for me this is my hallmark book for this list that I'm I know I'm going to enjoy <laughs> and also there's nothing wrong with that okay sometimes we just want something cheesy and I'm so glad that cheesy rom-com books exist out there because it Imagine if we're just reading serious, super fantasy world building books all the time, like my brain would hurt. I sometimes just want something fluffy. Also, I feel like this is going to be a great book for this summer because literally the title of this book is That Summer Feeling. And also this book takes place in a campground which i absolutely love i'm a huge camper i'm actually going camping tomorrow for the next three days and i actually i might just take this with me i might see if it's on kindle or audiobook i don't know i i love camping and the setting is camping nothing gets more summery than a book with a campground setting so I'm excited for, for my little Hallmark summer camping book here, okay? And the synopsis says, Turns out you're never too old for a summer camp romance or a change of heart. When a divorced woman attends a sleepaway camp for adults only, she reconnects with a man from her past, only to catch feelings for his sister instead. Garland Moore used to believe in magic the power of optimism and science from the universe. Then her husband surprised her with divorce papers over Valentine's Day dinner. That's so 
I'm not gonna say the curse word I want to say because I don't want to I don't want YouTube to punish me now Garland isn't sure what to believe anymore except that she's clearly never meant to love again when new friends invite her to spend a week at her reopened sleepaway camp she and her sister decide it's an opportunity to enjoy the kind of summer getaway they never had as kids if Garland still believed in signs this would sure seem like one summer camp is a chance to let go of her past and start fresh nestled into the picturesque Blue Ridge Mountains Camp Carl Cove provides the exact escape Garland always dreamed of until she runs into Mason the man she had a premonition about after one brief meeting years ago no matter how she tries to run the universe appears determined to bring love back into Garland's life she even ends up rooming with Mason's sister Stevie a vibrant former park ranger who is as charming as she is competitive the more time Garland spends with Stevie the more the signs confuse her the stars are aligning in a way Garland never could have predicted amid camp tournaments and moonlit dances Garland continues to be pulled toward the beautiful blonde outdoors woman who makes her laugh and swoon summer camp doesn't last forever but if Garland can learn to trust her heart the love she finds there just might Okay, this sounds all the things cheesy and kooky and I'm super excited. And the setting is in a campground. Who doesn't love a good old campground? So very excited for this book. All right, friends, we are to our last book recommendation of these 10 LGBTQIA book recommendations to read for June for Pride Month. So the last one I have is a graphic book. If you guys know me, you know that I love a good graphic novel. There's just something about words and beautiful illustrations it's just like a whole vibe okay i adore i absolutely love graphic novels so the one i want to recommend to you guys i just recently got i believe i already showcased yes i did i showcased this book already in my cozy recommendation books video which i will tag somewhere here below and this is a cozy fantasy adventure in a graphic novel form so if you are a fan of legends in lattes i believe that's what the book description said when i bought this book then you're absolutely going to love this cozy fantasy graphic novel and that is the baker and the bard a cozy fantasy adventure by fern hot look at this beautiful cover oh i love it just so warm and inviting the color palette is just beautiful for this uh summer it looks so beautiful it looks so beautiful okay and this is this is the back so let me read to you guys the synopsis before i show you inside the book the synopsis says Juniper and Hadley have a good thing going in Larkspur, spending their days apprenticing at a bakery and performing at the local inn. But when a stranger places an unusual order at the bakery, the two friends set out to forage the magical mushrooms needed to make the requested pastries. Along the way, Juniper and Hadley stumble across a mystery too compelling to ignore. Something has been coming out of the woods at night and eating the local farmer's crops, leaving only a trail of glowy goo behind. Tempted by an adventure that could fuel their bardic craft, Hadley tows Juniper into the woods to investigate. What started as a simple errand soon turns into a thrilling quest to save some furry new friends and their caretaker, a soft-spoken fae named Thistle, who are in danger of losing their home. Oh. <laughs> this just sounds so warm and inviting. I absolutely love it. Let me show you inside of the book look at the beautiful images inside friends oh my goodness i love it it's so cute i just want to give it a big warm hug ah the color palette is just absolutely beautiful ah this is so cute i love the pink pastel hair <laughs> it's so cute i love it okay yeah that's the baker and the bard so friends, that concludes our LGBTQIA book recommendations to read for June for Pride Month. Remember, these are books that center queer authors, queer main characters, and we need to center these books more in our TBRs, not just for Pride Month, but throughout the entire year. I'm very passionate about centering marginalized voices in all the ways. So. 
this is a great way to center queer voices so i'm very excited to get into these books here with that being said friends i really hope that you enjoyed this video it definitely made all the serotonin levels go up for me in my brain because i haven't done a sit down video with you guys in a while this was very special for me also just a quick little reminder i do have a book club that you can join if you want to for only two dollars which is a part of my patreon that i actually call spellbound manor i will leave all the details down below for my patreon i host a book club there we read great fantasy books we are currently voting for what book to read for the month of june that also centers queer uh, main protagonist i think the one that is winning right now is titled the honey witch by sydney oh my gosh i forgot the author's name i believe that book is more so like a sapphic cottage core romance type of book so i'm very excited i'm hoping that book wins because i really want to read that book for this month but currently yeah it's winning so if you want to join our cozy no commitments low stakes book club because i always say that reading should be fun i never want to make folks feel pressured to read the entire book then feel free to check out my patreon i also offer a whole bunch of other goodies on there i will leave the link to that down below if you want to learn more about it with that being said friends thank you so much for being here i really really appreciate you remember that you can create the life that you want because you so deserve it friends i will be seeing you in a video very very soon take care and bye for now